Punic Wars were fought between the Roman Republic and Carthage, the Phoenicians. They fought three wars on land and at sea and this caused enormous losses on both sides. Let's start with the First Punic War. Carthage began with its capital in modern day Tunisia. It ruled a maritime empire including southern Iberia, coastal northern Africa, the Balearic Islands, Corsica, Sardinia and western Sicily. It was the dominant naval power in the Mediterranean and generated most of its wealth through trade. The Roman Republic was growing. It was quickly expanding across mainland Italy with its powerful army, but it had neither a navy nor any naval experience. Carthage and the Roman Republic enjoyed strong trade links and were allies. From 480 BC, Carthage fought against Magna Graecia, the Greek city-states of Sicily, who were led by Syracuse on the eastern coast. During the Pyrrhic War of 280-275 BC, King Epirus unwisely fought on two fronts, one against the Roman Republic on mainland Italy, and at the same time against Carthage on the island of Sicily. In this period Carthage resupplied the Romans and sometimes offered them naval support. The Roman Republic was expanding across southern Italy in 270 BC. At this point the Greek cities of southern Italy known as Magna Graecia promptly surrendered. The First Punic War broke out in 264 BC as Rome expanded into Sicily, an island of strategic importance to Carthage. What caused it? Well, there was a dispute over the city of Messana, modern day Messina. A group of mercenaries known as the Mamertines were hired to defend against the Carthaginians. Instead, they gained control of Messana, and this caused both Rome and Carthage to send armies to assert their interests. The Romans pushed back Carthage and their Syracuse allies and proceeded then to attack the city of Syracuse who promptly surrendered. Syracuse now were a critically important bridgehead for Rome into Sicily and they would supply the Roman forces. The retreating Carthaginians selected Acragas modern-day Agrigento, the port city on the southern coast, as their strategically important city, which could be easily resupplied by sea. In 262 BC, Rome attacked Gela and then Acragas. The ongoing land war consisted of Roman armies attacking Carthaginian cities in Sicily, typically by surprise raids and sieges. The Carthaginian army was typically made up of foreign mercenaries. Iberia and Gaul also supplied experienced infantry and cavalry to Carthage. Carthaginian ships raided the Italian coastline from bases in Sardinia and Corsica. The Roman supply system at this point was stretched and shipping supplies did run the risk of Carthaginian interceptions. Carthage dispatched an army to Sicily, led by Hanno, which included Ligurians, Celts and Iberians, to end the Roman siege of Acragas in 262 BC. The Carthaginians suffered a devastating defeat and heavy losses at the Battle of Acragas, even losing their elephants. The Romans seized the city and sold its population into slavery. After taking Acragas, the Romans advanced westward to make an unsuccessful siege on the fort at Mitistraton. Hamilcar raided the Roman camps, going on to seize Enna in central Sicily and also Camarina near Ragusa. The Romans soon retook Enna, Mitistraton and assembled to make an unsuccessful 
attack on Panormus, modern day Palermo. The skirmishes continued, an uneasy stalemate. Carthage fortified coastal towns, keeping the supply routes away from Roman attack at sea. This forced the Roman hands in 260 BC. They were forced to build a fleet and they did so using a shipwrecked Carthaginian quinquereme. Whereas quinquereme's made up Carthaginian fleets, the Romans were initially out of their depth against the more experienced Carthaginian naval crews. They did however develop the Corvus, a boarding bridge which enabled Roman troops to board enemy ships. This was important as the Roman ships were slow, heavy and made it very difficult to ram enemy vessels. This also enabled the formidable Roman army to contribute in sea battles. The Roman fleet sailed to Sicily in 260 BC. Some sailed to Lipari in the Lipari Islands. Hannibal Gisco dispatched some ships led by Senator Budes to free Lipari and he dispatched them from their naval base in Panormus. The Carthaginians trapped the Romans in the harbour and defeated their very inexperienced fleet. Hannibal soon ran into the entire Roman fleet. Gaius Duilius led the Roman fleet against the Carthaginian fleet at Milazzo at the Battle of Mile. Equally matched, the overconfident Carthaginians broke formation and attacked the Roman ships. The Romans boarded 30 Carthaginian ships using the Corvus, their boarding platform. Losing further ships, the surviving Carthaginians fled. In 258 BC, the Romans won the Battle of Sulci in Sardinia, inflicting heavy losses on the Carthaginians. Hannibal Gisco, their leader, fled and was later apparently crucified by his own soldiers for his incompetence. The Romans struggled to maintain campaigns on two fronts, in both Sicily and Sardinia, so they decided to focus on Sicily. In 257 BC, the Carthaginian fleet accidentally ran into the Roman fleet anchored off Tindaris, Tindari, in northeastern Sicily. The Romans, led by Gaius Attilius Regulus, immediately attacked and the Battle of Tindaris ensued. Both sides lost ships in a chaotic battle, but eventually it was the Carthaginians who withdrew to the Aeolian Islands. Rome's naval victories at Mile and Sulci caused the Romans to now focus more heavily on a naval strategy. The Roman fleet set off from Ostia in 256 BC, led by Marcus Attilius Regulus, and they picked up an army in Sicily, and led by Hanno the Great, who was actually reluctant to fight Rome, and Hamilcar Barca, they cut off the invasion force on the south coast of Sicily. Over 600 warships fought the Battle of Cape Ecnomus, which resulted in a Roman victory, but heavy losses on both sides. Landing in Africa near Aspis, modern-day Calibia, Tunisia, the Roman army began to run amok across the Carthaginian countryside. Aspis fell, the Romans captured Tunis and began to raid the outskirts of Carthage. The Spartan mercenary Xanthippus now led the Carthaginian army. In 255 BC, Xanthippus defeated the Romans at the Battle of Tunis, capturing some Romans, including Regulus, and killing most of the rest. After this early success, Xanthippus was wary of the jealous Carthaginian generals. He took his money and he went home to Greece. The Roman army rescued the few survivors but was attacked by the Carthaginian fleet of Cape Bon in the Battle of Cape Hermaean. 
where the Carthaginians were heavily defeated. The Roman fleet fared no better. It ran into a storm and most of the ships sank. It is believed that perhaps the Corvus was partly to blame for the Roman losses as it was rarely used after this occasion. As the Romans set about rebuilding their fleet, the Carthaginians attacked. They captured Acragas in 254 BC, but realising they would be unable to hold it, instead they destroyed it and left. The Roman army pushed west across Sicily and had Panormus under siege. As the Romans attacked and entered the city, its population swiftly surrendered. This was a turning point of the war, as now most, but not all, of Sicily had fallen to Rome. In 253 BC, the Roman fleet began raiding Africa, but lost most of their ships in a freak storm. Another Roman fleet sailed towards Lilibium. They destroyed the Carthaginian cities of Selinus, Selinunte, and Eraclea Minoa, but Lilibium remained. In 251 BC, the Carthaginian commander Hadsdrubal marched on Panormus. The surprised Roman army retreated into the city. As Hasdrubal's army and his elephants moved towards the city, the Roman defences caused the elephants to flee and they were soon followed by the Carthaginian army. A Roman land army placed the key Carthaginian city of Lilibium under siege in 249 BC while a Roman fleet blockaded the harbour. Carthaginian Quinqueremes sailed from the Aegates Islands into Lilibium. The Carthaginian garrison was supplied by ships running the blockade and there was nothing the Romans could do to stop them. Publius Claudius Pulcher made a surprise nighttime attack on the Carthaginian fleet at Drepana. The Roman fleet became confused in the dark and this enabled the Carthaginian commander at Herbal to counter-attack. The Romans were soundly defeated by the superior Carthaginian navy. This was Carthage's greatest victory of the war. By 248 BC, the Carthaginians held only Lilibium and Drapana in western Sicily. Hamilcar Barca adopted guerrilla tactics to defend these cities and tie down the Roman forces. After 20 years of war, Carthage and Rome had fought each other to a standstill. Both were close to bankruptcy, both had suffered appalling losses in manpower. This was more serious for Rome as Carthage had used large numbers of mercenaries. Realising Drapana and Lilibium would have to be blockaded by sea before they would fall, another Roman fleet was built. The financially strapped Roman Senate resolved that heavy reparations would be imposed on Carthage once the war was won. The Romans were now experienced shipbuilders with sturdy, high-performing quinqueremes the Carthaginian fleet was intercepted and the Battle of Agates Islands ensued. The Romans defeated the Carthaginian fleet, then moved against Lilibium and Drapana. The terrible state of Carthaginian finances meant they were unable to build another fleet. They sued for peace and the Treaty of Lutatius in 241 BC ended the First Punic War. Carthage left Sicily, returned its prisoners and paid ruinous reparations to the Roman Republic. Join me for part two. If you've enjoyed this video, please consider giving it a like and maybe subscribe to the channel. That way you can enjoy more of this content. Thank you. Click here for some more videos you may be interested in.